Hello, <laughs> hi. Uh, I'm Wadi Essin. I'm Cynthia Essin. And today we're here uh, to talk about books, poetry, writing, a lot of things, aren't we, Cynthia? Yeah, we are. It's in collaboration with the Lit Collective Book Club with Bunga Club and University. So today we're going to be talking about why we like writing. So what's your first question for me, Sunny? Um, who is your favourite heroine and why? Oh. Who's my favourite heroine? Well, obviously, I don't know about you, but I have a lot of favourite heroines. Do you? No. Really? No. I find one and I stick with it. Okay, we'll start with like, I feel like I'm biased because I see one and I see all the other flaws in the others. Okay, so give me your first number one. Eleanor from Sense Sensibility. So Eleanor from... I, I do love her. So mm -hmm. we've got to specify today the theme is sisterhood because we are sisters. We're sisters. Cool. Um, so this is our first book with sisters. Uh, tell me why. So describe Eleanor and why you like her and she's your favourite in there. Well, Eleanor was really level-headed compared to mm, Sister Marianne. Definitely, yes. Yeah. And she seems to have a bigger sense than dignity uh, than mm. any other person I've ever read about. I just feel like I aspire to be her in that sense. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow, because when I read Sense of Sensibility, I really I found kinship with Marianne. Mm -hmm. And I really loved kind of her free spirit, her naturedness. Like, the way that she kind of broke from their society. She just had them curly ringlets, her piano, her bad attitude. And she was out there in the village just living her best life, wasn't she? Yeah, but to me, she seems a bit reckless. Yes, <laughs> that's yeah. why I like her. You're right, though. She definitely is reckless. Whereas yeah. you're right, I do think that Eleanor kind of, like, counters her. Mm -hmm. How do you think she counters her? They're a bit yin and yang, aren't they? Not really. We we'll just specify this book is by like, Jane Austen, first yes. of all. For those that are, don't know, um, oh. so you're definitely Eleanor and you describe her, your three words to describe her would be what? Um, proud, sensible and wise. Well, I definitely agree with all of those things. She's very dignified, maternal, restrained, but then she's very passionate as well. Mm -hmm. And I'm really, really happy when she gets a classic Jane Austen yeah. happy ending. Um, whereas I think Marianne was probably a little bit punished for her unruliness in that society. <laughs> she kind of has to go through these stepping blocks before she's kind of granted with... Well, I think she takes things for granted, like, she didn't even, um, oh, oh, she didn't even start a basis for a relationship, she just caught, sort of jumped into it and expected something to happen, and she Definitely. didn't, she Head just tried to Marianne, I mean, to Eleanor, yeah. and I feel like Eleanor had everything sorted out, like, she knew what was going to happen, she, and she, she stepped know. away look, before really look after any finances happened. of the family, look after the mum and the little sister, yeah. kind of had this fathership, mothership role, big sistership role, mm -hmm. and it kind of married with everything. That's really, really, wow. Sunny, I didn't know that, Mar I didn't know Eleanor mm -hmm. Dashwood was number one on your list. Yes, absolutely. So before we move into a couple more sisters, if we're talking Jane Austen and we're talking sistership, we have got to mention... Pride and Prejudice. Pride and Prejudice. <laughs> We've got to mention the Bennets. Um, for me, obviously, the one that sticks out to me that I just have loved so much my whole life um, is Liz, Liz, oh Liz, Liz, Elizabeth Bennet. I think, I see actually, in some ways, I think she's, is she? Some ways I would say she kind of has Marianne Dashwood's sensibilities. She has Eleanor's definite like restraint and dignity. Uh, but stubbornness. <laughs> stubbornness, and, but really kind of smart. Uh, so much integrity. When I think of Elizabeth Bennet, I think of integrity. Do Absolutely. You, why do you think she's got a lot of integrity? Because I feel like just um, throughout the book, you see lots of different couples, and um, she just seems to be her own person in every kind of way. Like, where her dad is reserved, she's outgoing. Where her mum is ignorant, she's knowledgeable. Mm, fantastic. So I feel like... Oh, that's lovely yeah. as well, yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I definitely see... Is it Lydia that is a little bit reckless with Wiccan? Oh, yeah. And Lydia, <laughs> do, do you see, I see the parallels with Marianne, with Lydia. Is she? They're a bit crazy, do what they want. I don't know why, tell me if it's crazy. No, but I feel like Lydia is more of a laid back, like she'll do something because she knows what's going to happen. Marianne just goes into it not knowing. Oh, wow, fantastic. Uh, other kind of sisters that scream out to me. Uh, you've read Knots and Crosses by Melanie Blackman. Yeah. We have a sister kind of rivalry in there with Persephone and Myra as well. Oh. Um, and 
Persephone Hadley in uh, Knots and Crosses is another really strong literary heroine of mine. I love, again, I feel like we, they've got the same thing. She's subservient against the society. Mm -hmm. She's fighting for what she believes in, mm -hmm. whether that be in kind of uh, love or politics or her ideals or just what she, her beliefs. Um, she, they kind of, she grows into that. I don't think the Stephanie, the Sefi that we met at the start is the Sefi necessarily at the end. That So I, I definitely admired her. I was around, it was 16 now, so me. Yeah, I was about 14, 13 when I read that book in school and instantly, I don't know what it was, I mean, I think a big part of it was that she was one of the first kind of uh, black characters that I ever yeah. read, wrote, read before and I just remember just kind of reading her descriptions of kind of you know, her dark eyes and just her family and um, finding kind of a visibility and I was like, oh my goodness, like, oh, not that I, obviously I loved all the other books that I was reading but it was definitely special to kind of get into that Norse and Crosses world that would yeah. parallel and very much match to our world. Did you kind of like Norse and Crosses? What was your relationship with the book? Well, to be honest, it just sort of showed the how we hadn't progressed much as a society. Mm. And I like to look at the big picture overall. So I wasn't really for romance in it, but of course, I understand. Yeah. So you kind of liked what did you like the, her character development, like her sistership, just kind of the vibe. Um, well, yeah, I do, but I feel like Brotherhood was bigger than, Ooh, like, yes. Jude and Callum had in some very Zeus toxic and Hades vibes, <laughs> wow. some, I don't even know the toxic combination that we can compare them to. Wow. It was, it was, it was, like, yeah, and with the death of their sister, they just hate my me Professor X vibe. It was, there was some, you're right, I think Brotherhood and also kind of, mm. but when I think back, I think of, the integrity that she learns through Callum's friendship, not necessarily just the romance, but kind of, you know, mm -hmm. being in kind of that proximity to those that are being oppressed and things like that. Fantastic, but we've got to talk about poetry. I love poetry, <laughs> you know, I, I adore poetry. You're a poet. <laughs> You're a poet as well. Uh, so we'll start off with you. What kind of poetry do you like? What kind of poems do you like? What poems do I like? Well, to be honest, I don't have a certain genre, like, all I want is vulnerability. Mm. Yeah, like it can be about a tree, but as long as I feel that tree and I know it's the <laughs> entire life story, yeah, then that's it. I feel like that personification, that character. Mm -hmm. um, like you don't even need big words. I just want emotion. Fantastic. So you, the emotion kind of drives your connection mm -hmm. to a piece. What kind of yeah. poems do you find to be emotional? Um, well, Mary Jean's Fletcher. She had a we poem. That. We read that. Too. Yeah, she had a poem in that. that where she sort of um, counted off all the mistakes that she'd done in her life, and it started from the day she was born. Her grandma thought she was a boy. Oh, that was a, that was sort of a beautiful collection. Oh, I really love names from that collection. Um, how mm -hmm. I think she writes that whole po poem, and she kind of withholds names, and she just uses pronouns to kind of show a, like a surreptitious or. Uh, a relationship that is not necessarily easily being accepted and I just it was so beautifully and simply wrote but I felt that in my heart Wars and Shire Wars and Shire oh my god her. we love her we we are the Yassins are a big fan well what can we say what? yeah uh, she's another poet that I've always been drawn to um, yeah. not just kind of hate she is someone that is driven by emotion vulnerability mm -hmm. fragility strength uh, mm -hmm. she kind of writes about females, at war, intergenerational trauma, just life, just love, grief, mm -hmm. death, she writes it all, doesn't she? She really does. Um, and, and she definitely inspires me. Mm -hmm. She definitely does inspire me as well. Um, what would you say just your favourite kind of book, fiction, non-fiction, poetry, your favourite story, what would you say? Your favourite story? Well, um... Well, to be honest, it was that short poem that you spoke about in your um, poetry group. Oh, mixing that, that, that's uh, Yeah, what a short poem. Give me a bit of an example so I can try and find it. Um, it was um, done by Warder Bell. Oh, Yeah, wow. where she, she spoke about the story and how beautiful. black is not what it seems, it just is. And it is a beautiful poem. We'll, mm -hmm. we'll read that. Do you it's, want to read that? It's from, sure. so it's from Mixing Roots, which is a project we ran, well, uh, I facilitated the workshops for alongside High South Yorkshire, which really um, 
and Vicky Martin could really help support that and yeah. for the Sarafa Somali Community Centre. Um, it was a lot of kind of like local girls around Sheffield and we met up last summer, didn't we? <laughs> on a Tuesday evening um, and we wrote about our stories, oh. kind of uh, what, what we cared about, what moved us, memories particularly that we wanted to grasp onto. Uh, and there was this one poem in there that was very beautiful. I love that you mentioned that because when that poem was written, yes, I felt writes. that. Oh my gosh. Um, wow. Written. After um, Dana Smith, what? It was um, based on kind of that Dana Smith poem, um, Let's. Oh, right. Well, it was movie. like Dinosaurs well, in the Hood. Yes. And this is, got to give a credit to the exceptionally yes. talented uh, Wadda Hassan. Of course. Let's make a nursery rhyme where black children are the centre of pure innocence and not the product of a bad environment. No poverty, no missing father, no angry mother, no real sense of danger. Let's make a nursery rhyme where Mary had a little lamb was a black girl who loved animals and farming. A girl who had her hands full all day, not sexualized, not called loud, not overbearing or aggressive, only Mary. Let's make a nursery rhyme where the little black boys are joyous and they're left tumbling all the way down through the neighborhood. No falling down the wrong path, no destructions. They are the boys they once were. Let's make a nursery rhyme where black beauty is appreciated skin and eyes mahogany and shiny marbles no porcelain skin no color of ocean and the voices singing the voices of black children just children wow i've got, I've got that was just oh goosebumps she wrote that in what, in what must have gone like two minutes just literally anything. and i think that's the power of poetry to make people feel something like we've just felt you know that kind of that instant connection that appreciation mm -hmm. that kind of inspiration fantastic it would be great sonny if you could read some of yours that are in this project as well. Uh, wow. We have some in here, which is this is Surfing the Twilight, which again, mm -hmm. this is a Hive um, anthology, and they kind of uh, a really great project in South Yorkshire, which those that are listening really should be a part of as well if you're interested or even a slightly curious about writing. Mm -hmm. It's called Earthquake. I remember when I found out white walls echo everything, even silence, and how much tears look like blood diamonds. Now I remember skin can turn blue and green yellow, no matter how dark. How much I hate the smell of gas. And how kinky hair can only shine when set alight. Remember waning by a foggy window, watching me blur into Jell Street. Oh, how I remember when I spoke for the first time. They are there and blaring my new ears, but I don't remember when I cried. How can I forget when I learnt that sound was just vibrations, that your voice had less power than level one earthquake? Wow, that's beautiful. What inspired yeah. you to write that? Sunny. Well, it was um, about my uncle passing, yeah, and this was the him. first poem that I wrote about him, and, mm. <sighs> and wow. it, it's beautiful. I love how uh, the line, the Adan blaring in my ears, that kind of, you know, the in Islam, the, the Adan when we're born. Yes, kind of, the first uh, thing you hear. Just, it just reminds us that... Uh, you know, kind of that rebirth. I love the reference to Jell Street Park. I have to write about <laughs> Jell Street Park as well, since it's so <laughs> close to us as well. And on that note, you love names and things. I, I, yeah, my pamphlet's called Tea with Cardamom, and mm -hmm. poems in there called, I wrote one just the other day called Cavendish Court, you know, oh. one called Victoria, I'll show you that later. Yeah. One called Victoria <laughs> Street. I love the specificity of location and geography yeah. and place in poetry. I feel like yeah. it gives it weight and gravitas and it makes me. I don't know, it's so visceral and I want to be there. I want to I want to know everything. Um, so I'm driven, I don't know, I feel like, you know, people say devil's in the detail. Oh, I feel like yeah. the poetry is in the detail. <laughs> um, and I've, I really have been drawn to that. So on that note, I'm going to read Victoria Street, which is about our street that we grew up in. <laughs> Victoria Street. If buildings had feelings, Victoria Street would need a therapist. Thugs. Imams, families, woman beaters, and a pub. Reside in anarchy, rubble, stray cats, and love. No mourning to each other. The postman knows to knock once. Children are ushered from pavements at the Maghrib. Billowing garnets brush past slogan crop tops. The breeze brings the adan, dubsteps, the sirens. The smell of the sauna, the smoke of incense. Out front, Arba breaks his fast. Choose dates. Offers a cautious smile to those with heavy eyes across the way. These parallel buildings demonstrate difference but reflect something of the same. This street is anything but royal. We share a common fate. That was amazing. 
Thank you. I was reading Sky <laughs> recently. I think I might read um, Nawadum specifically, Western Park. Yeah. Um, I wrote pe Western Park about a picture I found of Goya, Abel, um, all of our aunties and uncles um, when they just kind of came into the country, um, mm -hmm. just like post Civil War, kind of fitting in. They got their jumpsuits, they got their on feet. Yes, yes, yeah. all of that. Um, and they just used to go to Western Park and they used to have photo shoots, full yeah. on photo shoots. And when I found it, they had um, roses in their hat. <laughs> they did. I just, I just found something so beautiful and nostalgic and just um, perfect about the images. So I wrote about it. Western Park. I found the photograph in the brown suitcase with the clipped passport. A Woolworths cassettes and those old red NHS logbooks. Hoyer is wearing an oversized white t-shirt and his sinewy curls scamper across his shoulder blades. Jet black eyes dare the moon. Now she'll tell me those were the days of unruly impronto photo shoots, ankle deep in primroses. The loneliness of motherhood in Edward Street flats. Araxon's henna buzz cut is the focus, turning everything bokeh. Even then, ironclad, her smile reminding you why she married last. One day she'll succumb to the community and gift her daughter with all the ways to remain kind and good and modest. Then there's Abdisalam, who's only Abdi here, his face framed by a cloud of afro. Ebony skin stark against a smile. Soon he will too answer to a half name as he juggles a half life. Weekdays spent scolding sons for eyebrow slits and fades. Those Sundays longing to cut across his boyhood mountains. That was. It sounds like <gasps> really about the picture. You recognize some of those individuals, don't you? Yeah, it is. definitely. Um, oh wow, definitely that was thrilling. Sunny, too kind, way too kind. This is just gonna be a whole video of <laughs> me just being like, Sunny, that's amazing. Wow, <laughs> kind of um, absolutely fantastic. So, what poem that you wrote did you feel? Because uh, I know I write about family, and you write about family, which happens to be the same kind <laughs> yeah. of family. Duh. Um, What's your relationship with writing about people in your life? Well, to be honest, I feel like I don't really write people. I just mm. write parts of their lives. So mm -hmm. I, I don't talk about the full picture. I just mm. I either talk about the bad or the good. So this, you just kind of have a snapshot or a moment or something mm. you hold on to and you capture yeah. and you care about. Like the poems are just word pictures of people. Oh, that's beautiful. Your poems are word pictures uh, of people. I, I like that. You know, yeah, that's, that's, that's a really, <laughs> really kind of uh, beautiful, I'd say, definition of poetry. Mm. Absolutely fantastic. It really uh, is just you. And if you could pick a poem now to read for us as a picture, which one do you pick? I think you should read the one. I, I saw it. Is it in uh, here? That is, uh, it's got the word Anshah in it, that poem. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> I mm. love that you could, do you want to tell Anshah what that is for anyone that's listening? Oh, it's here. Anshah is literally milk tea. So it's just like milky tea. That's like 20% of a tea. A tea. Like 80% yeah. milk. <laughs> yeah. and that's how you have it. Yeah. And who is this poem about? It's about my Ayeyo. You mean my grandma? Our Ayeyo. Yeah, got me out of the family, Sonny. Sorry, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we always do that. We'll be like, my grandma, my sister, my mom. Even. Yeah. <laughs> it's this weird kind of ownership we have over everybody. No idea. Everybody <laughs> pulls us out on it. Yeah, okay. Um, it's called My Paternal Grandmother. It took years to notice the salt in your soup was too much. The mountains of Kamis covering it, numbing my brown taste buds. The milky hand of Shafu we never sure contained tea. You alternated between calling me too young to asking, when are you going to uni? <laughs> you say you grew up in the me and mocked the hyena for never stealing the goat. But I only see you in a two bedroom flat, waiting for late June to sweep you away, with the bush of a branch belonging to a fruitless tree, large enough to give birth under. Wow, it's beautiful. I really, I mean, I remember you first when you first wrote this. For me, I kind of that I only see you in a two bedroom flat waiting for late June to sweep you away. It's mm -hmm. such a when you do say you like to picture a 
paint a, what did you say? Yeah, paint? I like to paint a picture, that a snapshot is, of something. That is a picture that is, I don't know, you really kind of captured that kind of that essence of, I don't know, I don't, it's, it's, there's something very really beautiful uh, about that line, fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> so one on top of that, I was born. I was born, oh, right. I was born three years after 2001. This is not the longest gap my mother's, from my mother growing seed. I was born to grow up when permanent things melt, and even 15 year olds fight. I was born to dancing molecules of paper, living off ink that could be any colour, they only use black ballpoint pens. An unfamiliar emblem strung together by metal filings, reflecting colourless images. I was born in the gaps between teeth, stealing the sweetness of my tongue. I was born in a pawn shop. Death still owes. <laughs> I love that shit, you know, a death still owes. And I really, ooh, I really love that. I was born to dancing molecules of paper. Mm. Beautiful. What did you kind of like? Did you want to elaborate on that line? I was, what does well, that line mean to you? I was dance. I was born to dancing molecules of paper. Beautiful, beautiful metaphor. Well, because um, our parents were refugees, they just sort of imagined the paperwork needed for that, mm. like an entire life in three pages, in a staple. Fantastic. Beautiful. I mean, by make, adding that kind of dancing, it kind of a celebratory nature of it, and it just brings mm. kind of some heart and some quite literally <laughs> movement to that. That is beautiful. Thank you, thank you, thank you for sharing that, Sunny. Um, what sh poem shall I read next? Oh, um, the one about antagonists. Antagonists. Yes. Tales. Yes. Ironically, that's the page I was going to put on my now. <laughs> you know me, we're psychic. <laughs> Got it. Uh, so tales um, is what I wrote a couple of years ago, and I kind of, um, I just kind of wanted to. It was after I came, I went to Somalia land in two thousand seventeen, mm -hmm. um, and it was just such a this beautiful experience. Um, and I just wanted to write about it mm. and how, you know, the experience of it is not necessarily the, you know, popular media portrayal of it in these past kind of couple of yeah, years. Yeah, absolutely. So this is called Tales. I want to read a novel about Somalis that isn't trauma porn. Set it before the war and after my grandfather's birth. In this story, we're wearing 70s olive oil afros, decolleted bear on family photos backdrop by hand-painted palm trees, ocean views. We're not pirates, but mermaids, lazing by crystalline lagoons, sheaths hoisted to the waist, buoyant youth swimming to charm out in coral crowns, the rainforest of our sea. On the beach, there is no blood, only vendors reciting poetry, and there are no droughts on these dry pages. Turn a leaf and drift to the sulk at the hall and see how we barter and flirt in the baking hours, wearing the richness of our language in idle talk, like well-oiled summers. In the spine of this book, schoolgirls will fall in illicit love on abandoned ferris wheels, then emerge mighty from girlhood like the mountains of Sheikh. Our men will be the heroes for once, their webbed hands scaled in tenderness. The word colonialism? is nowhere in this manuscript. And the epilogue speaks of a character afloat with handed down culture, waving off a year of returning to Berbera. The antagonist will be us, swimming in deep water, for we cannot exist without fault. And we do not need to look for other lands or treasures to adorn it. Abundant gales, coal, frankincense, hand-drawn depictions of nomads and shiny green blue dirres billowing from its title. That oh was just I, I, beautiful. Thank you for saying that. Oh That's so sweet. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, I think I but again, I just kind of just wanted to, you know, some of the, some of those smaller details are quite literally, I picked, you know, the wheelbarrows on the street, you know, the girls on Ferris wheels. Um, it just takes me back to kind of that summer. But something deeper, you know, I love the fact that our, our grandmother is from kind of a sea town. Um, so close mm -hmm. to the ocean and kind of that relationship with the sea as well. I wanted that uh, to be within it. But that's what I love about poetry, that you can kind of honour the things you love and the people and the places you love. Mm -hmm. You can capture it uh, and not necessarily always trying to show it in a grey light, but show it in a, tr in a human, in a tr kind of a yeah. truth. Whether that be um, something that is more positive or nuanced, I just like the truth in poetry. And I, mm -hmm. I genuinely feel it has some kind of 
feeling that healing but like you feel something i know when i read yeah. a good poem do you Absolutely. i don't know if you feel that with sunny yeah i feel like i'm there with them in that moment yeah i just understand them like i've never been through that in my life but now right now i have i know absolutely i'm reading uh at the moment i feel like i'm reading 700 books at the same time <laughs> but one of the 700 books that i'm reading right now uh is this book called uh magnolia i'm saying it right just oh, it just yeah. came um, yes it just came yesterday yeah. it's got beautiful pink cover mm -hmm. uh and the, that poetry collection, I just, again, it says this strong sense of kind of like food and place and people and history. It just is beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, but the other, what are you reading right now, Sunny? What am I reading right now? Um, well, uh, I've gotten a book that I've always wanted to get. And it's mm. called Hopscotch okay. by, um, in Spanish, it's called Rayuela. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to roll the arse, but no. And... Um, you can read it in three different orders and to be honest that's what drew me to it but now mm. i've started to read it i've just been sort of lost with him because the main character is um a man called horatio mm. um just trying to figure out his like hamlet vibes <laughs> yeah, just trying to figure out his life and like hamlet's horatio yeah yeah and um every other chapter we just see his thoughts on everything and it just mm. completely changes how we read it before and we occasionally see glimpses of other people's minds and some chapters are just absolute nonsense. <laughs> Love that. But it just makes you realise that that's really what people are. Just weirdly <laughs> spelled words. <laughs> I like that. Like I said, it's like three kind of, the chronology is quite playful and how it, the structure of the story is a little bit playful. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. I like that. Um, what else am I reading? I mean, I, on the top of my head, um... I read Aisha's Aisha at last recently, which is kind of a modern kind of different sort of take of Pride and Prejudice, and it's quite it's really playful and I, and I really enjoyed it. And um, I read uh, Michelle Obama's Becoming, oh, which I know yeah. I was telling you all about Sizzling. it. <laughs> yes, yes. And uh, um, but again, I love kind of the the, the storytelling in that, and mm -hmm. I felt so particularly was shocked by her childhood, so moved by that. It was so beautiful. Again, so much dignity and grace in that storytelling as well. Um, I was um, doing, so obviously I'm an, English, I'm an English teacher at a local school as well, and so I've been reading a lot of poetry to kind of make up some of the new schemes that we're doing, which I'm so excited about. I'm really kind of proud and happy about the position of kind of um, respect and, and that poetry has, I think, in the educational mm -hmm. system, in, in the schooling world. Um, we study kind of, you know, the power and conflict, the love yeah. and relationship, kind of, you know, the Wordsworth, the classics, and, mm -hmm. you know, in a formal capacity but we also do unseen as well you did you like doing unseen poetry in school and oh, you, yeah again yeah. It, where you just kind of have this you just expose them to all of the writers and mm -hmm. stories that you want so i wanted to really take my time so i've mm -hmm. been compiling some writers for that um and i'm really excited about obviously there's some i've got back with uh i've got um ugly by muslim Shay. oh which yeah. starts with uh, your daughter is ugly and i just oh. love that first kind of line and this, this beautiful imagery in that um, so I've been reading the pamphlet mm -hmm. recently. Um, I've got in that year by Kim Moore in that, oh, um, which is yeah. just kind of this beautiful epiphany of a poem of kind of like self self actualization, mm -hmm. just kind of like inner self. strength. Absolutely. Um, I've got Raymond Antrobus Dear Hearing World, which I think is um one of the most beautiful poems. And a, 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 you, you talk about painting and storytelling, it's definitely in that poem as well. Mm -hmm. So I had to rewrite that, and that's part of the scheme. And I'm just so excited uh, to teach it in September. You don't well. even understand. Um, but that's what poetry does. I really think it gives people, everybody can be a poet, everybody can be a writer. Absolutely. Regardless of you know the education that you have. Um, and that's what I really loved about this experience as well. What did you love about your experience of working with the Lit Collective? Well, to be honest, the fact that I could just, the fact that I could just be myself, and write anything I wanted and mm. there was like no judgment like you could have a story that you think was something you should be ashamed of but you look around and someone's writing the same thing fantastic that's beautiful um and what do you like about being part of kind of uh this project that you've been part of this summer I've seen you kind of like on your little zoom uh, <laughs> meetings and and things like that what did what you what? what have you gained from it what do you mean from it what do you just like about it? Let me rephrase that. What do you want to say about it? Well, it was just amazing. Sorry about that, Dom. <laughs> well, 
it was just amazing seeing other people's opinions seeing, and um, seeing things in a different way. I suppose. And so I see, that's the one thing I'd say. Like it's just, I've been seeing it through rose colored glass and Ooh, they're there without that window. Fantastic. I think the clearness that writing brings and how it brings people together. Yeah. And we feel that we didn't even get to talk about the march. We did talk about the march. We talked about most of our literary favorite sisters. Yeah. Uh, but uh, this kind of brings this talk into a close. Thank you You're for welcome. speaking to me, Samine. Thank you for asking me. Um, thank you so much to uh, the project that we're a part of. Mm -hmm. um, it's an amazing initiative in Sheffield. It's a great city for the arts. And mm -hmm. um, I really love how it amplifies the voices of kind of, I'd say, we said women for heavy projects. Yes. Um, um, and their relationship with literature, liter uh, reading sisterhood, love, all this joyhood and fantastic, happy kind of experiences. Um, but thank you for listening. Thank you. <laughs>